Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ahlan wa sahlan. That's as far as my Arabic goes. My name is Monica Hirano, and um, can you hear me well? Everybody, can you hear me well? I'm Brazilian, and I'm currently living in Egypt here. I work in Dub 1718. I'm a project manager there. Uh, and tonight, as you know, or not, uh, we're here gathered to discuss the ways that uh, society has been carrying the issue of plastic consumption ver versus uh, envir environmental issues and climate change and the marine life. Luckily enough, we have two participants here with, with us today that are working with great effort towards mitigating the, one of the Egypt's uh, most pressing environmental issue. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, about it later. So, um, as you'll see in the movie and as we discuss, the issue is quite alarming and not much is done about it. Uh, but luckily, again, we also see that there's a lot of initiatives uh, taking place. And uh, just to, to illustrate uh, one of the hottest ones at the moment is the Conference of Biodiversity which was uh, initiated in 93 in Brazil. It was this first uh, edition. And now it's here next door in Sharm el And it started a couple of days ago. So, bravo for us. Um, now I would like to introduce uh, Mona Shahin. Uh, she's the founder and manager of um, here at Tahrir Lounge. And also would like to thank her uh, for opening the space with generosity for this very needed discussion. So, Mona, can you give us some words? Hello. Um, I don't know. Uh, I uh, first of all, welcome. أهلا وسهلا بكم في التحرير لونج جيتا. أنا منى شاهين مؤسسة ومدير المشروع. برحب بكم جدا في التحرير لونج ودائما أنتوا أصدقاء بتهلوا علينا. أولا كل سنة وانتم طيبين. عيد المولد النبوي شريف النهاردة. وإحنا كنا وإحنا بنحضر بنقول الناس ممكن تيجي النهاردة ولا لا. بس الحمد لله أنتوا جيتوا يعني. فنحن سعداء جدا أن أنتوا جيتوا النهاردة. وشكرا لتشرفكم لنا. أنا حابة بس أقول في البداية في هنا كم حد جي قبل كده التحرير لونج. Who came before to Tahrir Lounge? طب الحمد لله شكرا. وهنا من أول مرة يجي لتحرير Lounge النهاردة. أوكي أهلا وسهلا يعني فرصة سعيدة. أنا في البداية برحب بكل الموجودين. Thank you Monica for the nice presentation. I would like also to welcome Philip Mopay and Manar Ramadan, Shadi Khalil, all of all of the amazing people that will speak to tonight. أنا أسف أنا بقلب على لغة لغة وجع تاني. ولكن كمان أحب أشكر طبعا أمنا وعمر جدا على المجهود الكبير اللي بيعملوه على طول والتحضير اللي كانوا بيعملوه بيعملوه جدا. وحاجات يعني بيعملوا حاجات حلوة قوي كل مرة بتبقى بتبهرنا أكتر من الأول تحيي لونج استضاف قبل كده مرتين السي سي تي ودي تالت مرة احنا بنسعد ان احنا وبنشرف ان احنا موجودين معاكو في السي سي تي وأحب أقول بس تحيي لونج للناس الجديدة اللي أول مرة تكون موجودين عندنا تحيي لونج يعتبر منصة ثقافية وتوعوية بيشتغل في خمس محاور أساسية والسنة الجاية كمان هيكون المحاور دي بينا بشكل كبير قوي فبيشتغل في التوعية وده من الحاجات اللي احنا بنستضيفها النهاردة يعني الأورينس وإحنا النهاردة ده يعتبر من ضمن الفعاليات اللي احنا بنحب قوي ان احنا نشارك فيها ونبقى فيها وبندعمها و و وهنا أنا هقول نقطة بس صغيرة ان لو حد في حضراتكم حابب يعمل حاجة السنة الجاية حتى لو صغيرة سكيل أصغر شوية بيقول لنا وإحنا بنقدر نساعده في ده إحنا بنقدر نفاسيليتيت ون ونهيئ المناخ ونعمل بنقدر نساعده إنه هو يبني حاجة زي كده فأهلا وسهلا بيكو لو عندكم أفكار صغيرة نقدر إحنا نستضيفها بنشتغل في مجال التوعية في مجال ال ال التوعية التمكين بنشتغل في مجال توعية والتمكين وبدايات الجديدة والفاعلية والمشاركة ال لا مش الاستدامة الاكسبرشن التعبير تعبير وبما ان احنا قلت تعبير الشهر اللي جاي ده ديسمبر هيكون عندنا اول مهرجان مستقل احنا بنعمله 
وبندعوكم جدا ان انتم تبقوا موجودين معانا عشان تشوفوا الفن المستقل احنا بتحرير لونز بنشوفه بعين عامله ازاي وهيكون في ديسكشنز قويه جدا على ايه هو الفن المستقل واحنا محتاجينه بشكل ازاي من وجهه نظرك شبابيه آه شكرا لكم جدا وانا حابه اقول ان تحرير لونج جوتا هو من احدى مشروعات المركز الثقافي الالماني جوتا مدعوم من الخارجيه الالمانيه واحنا زي ما قلنا لكم منصه توعويه للشباب من الشباب الى الشباب والشباب طبعا يعني كلنا عارفين بيبدا من سن ست سنين بينتهي في التسعين شكرا لكم جدا <تصفيق> شكرا هيبقى في بس برزنتيشن سريع عشان بس تشوفوا شوية حاجات كده احنا بنحطها دايما بس يعني عشان تبقى عندكم فكرة كده الصورة هي مش هتاخد أكتر من دقيقة. We will have one second uh, one minute for the presentation and then we come back. Thank you very much. Thank you. So following the introductions tonight, I would like to call here Mr. Philippe Maupé. Uh, he's the head, uh, depart uh, this head of the science department here in the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany here in Cairo. And if you would like to give us some words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, dear Cairo Climate Talk talkers. It's my great pleasure to welcome you today to the 56th Cairo Climate Talk. So, this is why we're here today. Plastic bags. And we're using way too many of them every day. Now, I would like you to think about uh, your last trip to go shopping and how many plastic bags you used. Personally, I always try to have a uh, reusable tote bag and just to make a little bit more advertisement I use it from the ZFA which is the German organization for the German schools so if you know the German schools the DEO the DSB these are the guys organizing it so I always try to have this handy but sometimes I forget it and I end up with five six seven or eight plastic bags for just one shopping trip and uh, this is too much and I'm sure it's the same for you so why are plastic bags so bad and why are we talking about them at CCT? Plastic bags can take up to 1,000 years to degrade. If they are burned, they pollute the air with toxic fumes and billions of plastic bags end up in our oceans every year and they kill marine lives, they pollute our beaches. And just this morning, a German television published an article uh, that said a whale was found dead on a beach in Indonesia and it had almost six kilograms of plastic in its stomach. And actually, if you go on the internet and Google whale and plastic bag, you will find many, many more articles like this with up to 30 kilograms of plastic and over 80 plastic bags found in a single whale. And so, even if uh, they're not ingested by animals, plastic bags continue to do harm. Scientists from the University of Hawaii have recently discovered that the degradation process of these plastic bags in the ocean and on landfills creates methane gas, a dangerous greenhouse gas, which is damaging for our climate. And this is one of the points where we're here for the climate talks. And I could go on. These plastic bags pollute our fields. They clog our canals and river. And microplastic, a recent discovery, are very, very dangerous for us humans if we have them in our body. So in short, we need to drastically 
reduce our plastic bag consumptions. So Egyptians uh, use about 12 billion plastic bags a year. In Germany, which has a smaller population, we went from around 7 billion plastic bags a year in 2000 to only 2.4 billion bags in 2017. So how did we do this? This important degree decrease was caused by companies agreeing together to get rid of plastic bags altogether or to impose a fee on every plastic bag used in a supermarket. And so with this, we're hoping to further reduce the consumption of plastic bags in Germany with the goal of totally ending the usage of plastic bags in the future. In 2017, Egypt launched a national initiative called Enough Plastic Bags, and I'm very happy that this topic has been recognized as a central one for preserving our environment by both of our governments. So, in addition to raising your awareness about this issue with today's CCT, we would also like to help you reduce your daily use of plastic bags by providing you with free reusable uh, bags from Banlastic and also from the German Embassy. And you should have found those bags on your seats when you sat down. And if you didn't get one, there are more of them outside. And so, please, please keep these bags with you and use them when you go shopping. And just in one week, you'll be able to use the, to save tens and hundreds almost of plastic bags. So before we start today's movie, I would like to use this opportunity to thank Mona Shaheen and her team at Tahrir Lounge at Goethe for hosting us here today. This is a great location and I've been hearing about this in Germany or even for, for many, many years and I'm very happy to be here for the first time. So thank you very much, Mona, for hosting us. And so as you know, after the screening of this movie, which will last about uh, a little bit more than an hour, we'll have a panel discussion on the movie's ideas to reduce plastic waste and what we can do here in Egypt to make our lives less plastic. And so I'm very happy that today we're joined by our panelists, Ms. Uh, Mana Ramadan from Banlastic and uh, Mr. Shadi Khalil from Greenish Egypt. So thank you very much for coming here tonight. And also thank you to our moderator, Monica Hirano from DARP 1718. Thank you all for coming, and of course, thank you to the CCT or coordinators for organizing these events. So, tonight's movie is called Bag It, and it's a documentary by the American filmmaker Susan Barraza. In it, we will follow Jeb Beria and his partner Anne on their journey to use less plastic. And what starts about plastic bags evolves into a wholesale investigation into plastic effects on our oceans, on our environment, and our bodies. And so we will see how our crazy for plastic road has finally caught up to us and what we can do about it. So with this, I wish you all an interesting and mind-opening evening. And hopefully, you will all switch from these plastic bags to these wonderful reusable bags. So thank you very much and enjoy the movie. Inshallah, inshallah, yeah, Philip. <laughs> Okay, so everything was said already. I was going to point some, uh, some things. Just one thing is that uh, both the movie and the discussion are going to be translated into Arabic. So if you need uh, to get your headsets, uh, they're on the corner of the hall. And after the discussion, we're going to have uh, some snacks so we can talk about and meet. It's going to be on the garden on the, when you go out, right on the left. Okay, so have a nice session. Uh, for now, we're going to have a discussion while we digest everything we heard and everything we saw. Um, I would like to first um, <coughs> invite our panelists, uh, Shadi Khali, if you can come. And Mana Ramadan, can you also please come? Well, I'm really glad to finally meet them. I didn't know, they didn't know me and I didn't know them, but our, um, our careers have passed through together because uh, I worked uh, directly with uh, Madhat uh, Benzone. Uh, his, may his uh, soul rest in peace. And he's, he was his um, um, colleague. And also when I started uh, working in Dub 1718, it was just, uh, uh, Mana just uh, ended her project there with O2C, which hopefully she's going to talk a little bit more after. Um, so Shadi, 
he is a great person because he founded and he's managing now Greenwich and Manchana, isn't it? Manchana. <laughs> and uh, his effort and great work are here to encourage society to a more sustainable lifestyle. And Mana Ramadan, she is the co-founder of Benlastic Egypt, and this uh, this project focuses in banning the single-use plastics plastic here in Egypt. And like me, she also lived in India, and she saw like how much pollution there is, and how much it affects the social the the social life. So thankfully enough, she got to understand that she can be a channel to change that situation. So to start with, I would like you both to introduce yourselves and talk about um, your careers in the sustainable business. So ladies first. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the great movie and uh, for Cairo Climate Talks. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, me. Is it? Oh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, the idea of Banlastic, uh, I'm one of three co-founders, uh, myself, uh, Ahmad Yassin and uh, Abdel Qadir. And uh, the idea came uh, basically, uh, uh, like how Monica was just saying, that when I was in India, I found um, that their plastic is banned and it's not only operating in uh, mega supermarkets and hypermarkets, it's also there in uh, local like food retailers. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that scene when I was buying some potatoes from uh, a street retailer and uh, then the, the man told me, okay, where is your bag? I told him, I don't have a bag. So he said, okay, sorry, I can't, like, I can't give you. So when he, when he, saw, yeah, and he saw that uh, we're go I'm going to leave, he got a small plastic bag from his pocket and he told me, okay, just take this, but don't say I give you this because it's illegal and it's banned. So it was very interesting for me that it took India 10 years to ban plastic until they reached to the micro businesses to also like to have the policies implemented properly. So this made me think, like, why not Egypt is not doing the same thing? And um, when I heard a little bit, like, which countries are already banning plastic bags, I found no countries in the MENA region had already done this, except for Morocco. A uh, few years back, when they um, hosted the COPE conference. Uh, still, it's not like I knew from my friends who are living there, it's not properly implemented, but at least it is, it is a step. And... Uh, I thought that Egypt should come next. Uh, so in uh, Banlastic, we mainly uh, we have a long-term vision of banning plastic bags or single-use plastic in Egypt, starting from Alexandria because we are also based in Alexandria, uh, which is one of uh, likewise all the coastal cities in Egypt, uh, m the ones who are mostly suffering from the plastic pollution, affecting our wildlife, our health, uh, causing clogging of the. Uh, of the drainage, so when it rains in Alexandria, the, the city like floats because the drains are mostly like clogged with plastic bags. Um, yeah, so in Panlastic, we, uh, we do this by delivering aware awareness workshops and by creating Arabic content on the, uh, on the internet uh, about the plastic hazards, how it affects our health and how it affects the wildlife. And also by offering alternative uh, solutions for single-use plastic, like shopping bags, and like this is the first product we already developed, but uh, we're still having more to go. So yeah. <laughs> Shadi? Um, I co-founded. Uh, is this working? Is it working now? Yes. Uh, I co-founded uh, Greenish in uh, 2017. With. Uh, I don't mind. Okay. okay. He's asking to speak in Arabic. I started in 2017. We to switch the people who don't speak Arabic to I think it makes sense. Oh, it makes sense, I know. I'm just saying that we can speak to the people who don't speak English to speak Arabic to speak Arabic.
عربي ولا <تصفيق> طيب اي كو فاوندد جرينس واز مدحب بن زهير ايرلي 2017 اور تور ستارتد اراوند ايجيبت تو ريز اويرنس اباوت بلاستيك how to ban it, how to stop use it, what other solutions communities can develop collectively in order to minimize their use to plastic. Uh, basically, we were triggered by the effect we saw during uh, a tour around Egypt, uh, around the Red Sea, uh, Mediterranean, and we were shocked by the amount of, uh, of trash we found in the sea. Um, actually, uh, we did uh, a workshop with the Tahrir Lounge in uh, maybe late 2016 before we found Greenish and I remember we found that uh, a ship that sank in the Red Sea and it has uh, a lot of uh, plastic in it and it was basically everywhere over the shore. Um, it was very shocking and the effect and the potential harms it can do and we all saw in the movies it can do to our health, to marine life and to uh, uh, to, to the future of other generation uh, triggered us to start Greenish. We started with uh, workshops uh, targeting uh, kids and then we uh, started with more community events, cleanups, uh, engaging, uh, uh, engaging uh, seminars, uh, working with um, academics. Uh, and then in um, early 2017, uh, we were faced with the, with the question, are we really making a change? Is awareness enough? Uh, so we started to lobby around the, the big community that was created uh, around Greenish uh, and we raised this question into uh, that maybe awareness is not enough. Maybe we need to offer more sustainable solutions. So we started Mashanna. Mashanna is an e-commerce website that only target conscious products uh, with minimal uh, plastic uh, packaging. Uh, with healthy products that promote uh, uh, more conscious use of products, uh, asking even further questions uh, like labor hours, uh, how is the product made and how is this going to be disposed, uh, uncovering more of the product story or our consumption story. Thank you both for the initiatives. Um, so the next question is, uh, as the Philip have, have mentioned, Egypt only produces 12 billion plastic bags per year. And we also know that very little is done uh, about this. And I would like to ask you both, how do you think that the government, the private sector and the third sector should work together to contribute and um, hopefully solve this problem? And do you, in which ways do you see that they can work together? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I think the first thing is that uh, there should be like round table discussion between representatives from each party, different stakeholders uh, concerned with this issue and to uh, find out why, is, why would every uh, stakeholder would be interested to ban the plastic bags or the single use plastic. So for example, uh, for the civil society, the main interest would be like spreading awareness about something that uh, affects our health and about like affecting the health and the wildlife. And also from the governmental point of view, uh, because like um, the government is paying a lot of money when they uh, when they fix the, th the, the problem that happens in the drains. Again, I'm focusing on coastal cities because we really suffer from this during the rain. Uh, they pay a lot of money, so it's a, cr uh, a canonical thing for them. And uh, also, be for the, this 12 billion plastic bag, we almost pay around uh, 2 billion uh, Egyptian pounds in this. And this is not only money, it's also resources, it's petrol. And with the uh, overvaluation of the Egyptian pound now, it's, uh, it's also an economic uh, problem that faces the government. And uh, also from the private sector point of view, it's a new uh, business opportunities for green economy. But the private sector will not be interested in this except when the customer will be aware by the civil society. And also when the government will, Im will support this by imposing policies so that the private sector will feel like uh, secure enough to uh, invest more in green businesses. So I think it just 
should be like a round table discussion between um, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, I second mostly what Monor uh, said. Um, Along with maybe radicalizing uh, the way you think about economy, the way we think about economic growth, uh, because the environmental cost is very essential in this term, and it's not only direct finance, finances coming uh, into cost, is plastic cheap? Yes, the Aniston cost is cheap, but the health uh, cost, uh, the, the, the environmental cost all combined is not cheap at all, and this needs to be studied, included in research, and this information needs to be available to the public. So we need to understand what actually uh, are we paying for, how are we paying for, um, this is one part. Uh, this conversation needs to step up a little bit, not uh, into conferences filled with plastic, uh, to be honest, because most of the environmental conferences is filled with plastic usage, and it's only a formal conversation, yani, or just like uh, to take pictures and to uh, and celebrate the World Environmental Day. Uh, this need to be deeper, uh, more radical, and the, the conversation need to step up a little bit. Um, we as consumers need to understand the stories of our products, the stories of our consumption. This is very essential. When I buy from, from an international brand or international product, all of what I can see is the basic t-shirt that cost 80 pounds. It, the story has more than this. The story has people who have been enslaved in order to make these products, who has been their health and safety has been jeopardized, and also how this product's material is going to stay on Earth for thousands of years, and the impact of this on our lives. So all of this information, is the key part is information. We need to have more and more information. Research needs to be more focused on, on the real impact. Thank you very much. Very well um, said. Uh, our next uh, question is uh, more in terms to national, like. Uh, this Egyptian scenario. So on the long run, how do you see that uh, the plastic bag problem will be managed in Egypt? And because as we could see so far, like stopping the, the production of plastic here in Egypt is like a utopia. So what do you, what do you see that uh, are the, the strategies that uh, have, have to be, take, be taken by the society and the institutions here? Okay. Uh I believe the first thing is the customer awareness because uh, like a lot of people would say that uh, yes we need the government support but this will never happen and even if there, if there are policies supporting banning plastic they will never be implemented if, except if the people are quite conscious about their usage and uh, like how Shadi was just saying the story of our products like um, like how the movie also was uh, was saying that uh, this plastic bottle it uh, it consumes 25 percent of its uh, capacity of oil and it consumes like one liter plastic bottle it consumes three liter of water to manufacture it so like this kind of stories i think the customers have to be aware so that they would make more eco choices when they when it comes to shopping so the this is one thing then we can Yes, definitely this should be supported also by, uh, by the government policies. Uh, but, like, again, this will not happen except if, if the, the customers would make it ready, the, make the market ready to, uh, for these policies. Um, and, yes, third thing, uh, oh, yes, I would also would like to... Uh, to strengthen this, uh, but it was interesting to know that the, the countries in, the, uh, in the Europe, they are enforcing their policies uh, by paying money if you want to take a plastic bag, but in uh, the, the, less, the developing countries are having more interesting story that you pay money if you don't have your bag, but it should also be an eco bag, and this is the case in India and then uh, in different uh, countries. So yeah, the customer awareness and then the policy supporting. This comes at the second level. Um, in the, yeah, from, from what I heard in Egypt, there's, there's already an ongoing conversation uh, about uh, plastic banning, but, um, th that they are planning to ban plastic maybe in five years from now. But right now, this is the introductory phase uh, that we are trying to look for alternatives. Uh, this is still a conversation, 
uh, a huge problem in Egypt that whenever a government change or a minister change, the whole plan uh, is ditched. Uh, so this is something very worrying to me, but I still hear this already an ongoing conversation uh, currently, and the, and the policy is going towards this way, to ban plastic, which is good for us. Uh, at this point, uh, the international conversation is contributing to this, uh, and also EU right now banning plastic usage, single-use plastic is also contributing because uh, the regular case of us following uh, Europe or uh, or it's not okay, it's not something to follow unless they do it. <laughs> uh, this is also paving the way a little bit uh, for the conversation. Uh, the question for sustainable solutions is very critical and we need to localize solutions here in Egypt. Zero waste tour is going viral in Europe and people come to me and say we want to start our own zero waste tour here. And I say it's already, it do really exist outdoors in every street, it's already here. So we need to maybe localize, try to uh, to think what's already existing here right now. Um, so this this is basically it. Another another thing also about green industry, and it was mentioned in the, in the documentary, it's uh, about recycling, because the word ecosystem and environmentally friendly is always referred to as recycling, and recycling is the solution, and it's actually not. Uh, and people get mad to us when we say this in conferences, that's that it's okay to consume and as long as you segregate and recycle. No, it's not okay and it's not a sustainable solution. Recycling has a lot of, uh, uh, of cost, uh, of transportation, uh, uh, carbon emissions, um, so it's not sustainable. Uh, this is something that I don't see a lot in, uh, in Egypt as, the, as a discussion. It's always uh, green is recycling, green is recycling. This is a national debate and also uh, it's the benefit of private companies that's actually um, very important at this point to, to be working on recycling, but they are only promoting for this. It's okay uh, if you recycle. Uh, so I think we need to uh, to again have an access for information for truth, and it's okay to recycle for now in, uh, in Egypt, but we need to find more sustainable solutions. It's already here. I like when he said we need to go back uh, to where our grand grandparents were uh, and what they were doing. Because maybe we don't need to innovate, maybe we need to look back and accommodate and localize uh, the worldwide solution and maybe like uh, solutions that go back in years. To re-promote again to re this uh, thing. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we were talking about uh, information. I remember when I was a child in growing up in Brazil, uh, we had a um, subject in school called the environmental issues. It was only for a an year and uh, it, it, it stayed with me for a long time because I remember that my parents would not uh, understand about environmental issues. They would throw the plastic bags on the cars when we were traveling. And when I was like five years old, I would st tell them, stop, this is wrong, you should not do that. Um, and many other things. And I was, we were wondering if, how was the situation here in Egypt? Because I know that my parents' uh, generation didn't have any such education. Mine did, and for, for sure the, the younger generations are also having it. So I would like to ask you, um, what about the, the, the education now here in Egypt? More specifically for the kids, also for the adults, because everybody needs um, the more information, the better. But uh, if you see that there are um, um, practical and uh, effective uh, systems, and if not, how can we revert that? Reverse. Okay. Uh, okay. For so for our, uh, the environmental education in Egypt, likewise the rest of education in Egypt, it's not interactive enough. Uh, and, but when it comes to environment, I think that we really should sense the impact of our choices so that we can change our uh, habits. So uh, to change what we are used or our parents taught us uh, in the house. So uh, yes, maybe the, the kind of workshops that we do in Banlastic or the type of workshops you do in Greenish is interactive and it engages the people, but this is not enough. It has to be uh, also implemented on a more national level. Um, so as a part of the, uh, of the science curriculum. I remember that uh, in, my, um, in the science uh, uh, lessons, we had learned that we should not be wasting 
uh, water or we should not be cutting trees. But I don't think that this is the thing, this is the reason why I'm not uh, over consuming water. I only started to do this when I really understood why we should not do this thing. So um, the, the kind of education we're expecting to be, it, uh, it should be more interactive, it has to be more reasoned, um, so that it makes the people think and more engaged on the impact of their choices. Um, yes. Um, for, يعني, for, for us, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was very triggering when one of the students said, uh, I don't understand what do you mean by horizon. And it's, uh, it came to our minds that we have a minimal engagement to, uh, to, to the real environment anymore. And there are generations who are coming up in Cairo and in cities in general that they don't have an interaction with natural environments. So they, so they maybe don't understand what they are losing. Um, what would I suggest is to experience because many, many children, like if anyone in the crowd has children or like any of us who have children, maybe we, we need to encourage them to go out, experience and experience nature, take them in places outside. This is the best interactive uh, class that they can actually attend, that they can see what, what, what is it like to be, uh, to be around trees, Was it, what uh, is it like to be uh, in a green space, what they might be losing. Uh, this is one thing. Another thing that actually to involve uh, environmental education in uh, national uh, uh, curriculums that need to be integrated, they need to be a deeper understanding of what we are facing. Um, there need to be more engagement uh, to adults as well in campaigning to make them understand what is the impact of what you are doing is doing to your right now, to the current moment, your health, to your near future and to your far future and the future of your next uh, children and next generation because one element of speaking of next generation, uh, like we get, we get this a lot in Egypt, uh, that when, uh, when we speak about next generation, he said, like people tell us, I don't know how I'm going to live tomorrow. I don't have money to live tomorrow, so I really don't care about next generation. Uh, and this is going to be the case for my children as well. So maybe outlining the health uh, problems uh, that they might face, uh, maybe outlining that the most jeopardized uh, people to, uh, to climate change and to, and to negative impact of, uh, of plastic are uh, actually the less privileged. Uh, especially in Alexandria. Uh, one story of climate change when we were speaking about uh, Alexandria, someone said, oh, I'm going to sell my sea view uh, apartment and just leave when the sea uh, level rise. So actually, if you don't have, if you have money, you, don't, you wouldn't care, you wouldn't be jeopardized to a lot of this, but the less privileged people need to understand that they are the one who's going to pay the cost uh, of all of this. Uh, in order to engage them. So this needs to be more of uh, education, awareness, and uh, opening an eye of the real impact that we are going to be facing in the near future. Uh, they wanted our support in uh, in doing uh, one beach cleanup for uh, for their classes uh, because they take this topic in their uh, science curriculum, and it was quite interesting for me uh, to see that, uh, especially as yes, it is an international school and also because they have resources, and then the governmental schools still will stay a gap until something happens and it uh, gets implemented. Yeah, properly and uh, more interactively in the curriculums. But yes, we have to take them to the, uh, to the open spaces, to the beaches, to the gardens, to see how the wildlife is affected, to see turtles entangled in, uh, in plastic bags. They will never sense it except when they really see it on ground. At that time only they will change their mind. Yes, I can, can I add one more thing? 
And I, uh, I also want to add more, one more thing because it was very eye-opening in uh, the documentary as well, is uh, that maybe we need to integrate the, to uh, the conversation about environment in every single topic we talk about. Because, for example, with gender, uh, all of the cosmetics, all the pressures that need to, um, that have been implied of how, of how the, the industry, the beauty industry is putting on, uh, on women and how they should be dressed up is actually adding to the waste and trashing the world as well and this goes in every single industry for our real enemy is not uh, is not only like uh, very direct direct plastic uh, making companies but also industries that work on uh, single-use plastic that integrate single-use plastic in their products and they are actually harming so many other aspects in society including gender and many many other battles so maybe we need to join forces with others uh, who are taking other topics as a pri as a priority, but maybe we can integrate the all the conversation about environment and their work. Yeah, in the end, it becomes a a snowball. Everything it's a domino effect. Well, um, now I'd like to share with you a story that happened to me this uh, some months ago during an aid vacation. I went to Nueva in Sinai and I stayed in one of these uh, nice camps there. Uh, and as a Brazilian, I'm very close to the sea, and I love the sea. So every day I would walk in the morning uh, around the camp, and uh, beside the camp where I was staying, there was an abandoned hotel. There, there was so much trash, so much trash, any kind of trash you can think of. Shoes, furniture, plastic bags, uh, anything you can imagine. So I decided to take two hours of each day of my stay there just to clean up the, the trash. I found a black, you know, these big black uh, plastic bags where you collect trash, which is also by plastic. Uh, I found one and I started uh, collecting. I did it uh, on the first day alone and I didn't mind because it's therape ther therapeutic to me and I don't mind doing that. I do it since I'm a, I'm a child. On the next day, two people came and they helped me. So I found, okay, that's nice. So I'm engaging people with that. On the third day, there was a guy filming us. <laughs> and this guy turned out to work in the camp and he's saying, oh, I'm filming this because we want to share this in our social, me social media to say, oh, our camp is very environmental friendly and maybe more people are gonna come. In the end, I got a 50% discount <laughs> because I did. <laughs> and um, in, in, in a way I touched like very, very small, um, in a very small scale, another life that maybe could think, oh, maybe I have two hours in my day that I can change the situation. And every day there was more trash, more trash because it, because it, com it comes from the, the sea, it comes from the tides. And um, saying that, I would like you to share with us um, individual uh, experiences that you had maybe or you saw other people doing that were effective and they were also like a domino but in a good way okay uh, I would mostly share my uh, own personal experience when I okay uh, is it yes it's working um, I would like to share my own personal experience when I uh, came to realize three uh, years back when I started to work in uh, the plastic exhibition uh, uh, project with Darb Sabatosher Tamatosher, the same uh, place. Uh, at that time when I became more conscious about my uh, uh, shopping choices. Uh, so now when I, for example, go to the supermarket and then uh, the people insist, the shopkeeper insists that you have to take the bag and I say, no, no, I don't want this bag, I don't need it. So they ask, like, why don't you need it? Maybe you can use it later. So I say, I have a lot of them at home and um, they're gonna be a waste in a few minutes and I'm, I'm not going to use it anymore. So these kind of conversations that keep on uh, happening, uh, even uh, in my previous office, when I started to tell them, okay, we don't need to cater in uh, plastic cups and plastic plates, we need to, to have more uh, environmental choices, maybe paper cups, it's a little bit better, it's not the best, but still, it's a little bit better. 
um, not, not buying like uh, disposable dispenser uh, packs, maybe we can use at least the refillable ones. Like these kind of things that makes at least the people in my small circle uh, think one more time before they use a plastic cup or a, or a plastic fork or, or something like this. So uh, I do this on a, on a very personal level since I became conscious about this. And uh, also on, uh, in the workshops that we deliver, we start to ask the people about what do they have in mind. So only by pushing them a little bit further to think about alternatives and realizing that our old traditional habits of packaging was more eco-friendly and realizing that our grandparents unconsciously they were using paper, not plastic, like before the invasion of plastic 20 years back, this makes the people think that, yes, maybe we can cut it off and it's not a super essential thing, like how we, uh, we believe. Yes, we can live without uh, plastic bags or, uh, or plastic cups. So, uh, yes, just pushing the people to think a little bit. I think this is like what you also uh, uh, did in your, in your experience. You, you just push the people to think, okay, this beach is not clean and it will definitely be more beautiful and we will enjoy more when it's more clean. So let's take an action in this. Um. Yeah, for for me, it, uh, like w when 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 it started, that I take serious uh, actions toward my uh, my consumption. Um, it was uh, great to share my struggle with people because this make uh, this, this create a, a sense of empathy and understanding that's also not easy for me. The whole world operate around plastic. It's so hard to change your uh, consumption habits. It was, it was for me. It's it, uh, yeah, yeah. It was very encouraging when I speak of how struggling it was for me. People would open up and also speak about it, and we find common ground and solutions. Uh, this has created a huge pool of solutions for in the past two years. We have found the local stores and neighborhoods that were able to to offer us uh, zero plastic uh, kind people who understand this concept. Uh, we have managed to do uh, a campaign uh, in, the in the street of actually to speak to shop owners about the whole idea behind this and how to integrate people around it. Uh, for me, like every day in Greenwich is a miracle because we usually come up with crazy ideas. We're just going to go on the street to speak to people about, uh, about how they should understand the logic behind low plastic uh, uh, bags and, uh, and to how to, like, banning plastic from the first place, uh, not to put the straw into the drink and give the client an option. And we find, like, in the next morning, a lot of people coming in and stepping in uh, at the day of the event and wanting to contribute. Uh, with cleanups, I find, like, Yani, I have a confession, but at certain points when I call Muslim for an event with the team at uh, 8 a.m. on a Saturday for people to come and clean up, I, I would have the sense that no one's going to show up and I find like 400 people coming up and showing up to clean and I still feel shocked every day. Um, so I think we are not few. Uh, this is something that we need to remind ourselves. We are like a lot of people... Are, a lot of people are here and a lot of people understand the logic behind of what we are doing and they experience it, which is more important than actually understanding. <laughs> uh, they, un uh, they experience the need for it and they want to live a more uh, sustainable life, a happier life. Uh, so I think we are reunited in a way. So this is, I'm reminded by this every day with every initiative, uh, with our community that's actually growing and uh, our team that I see very... Uh, engaging. Um, for, for me personally, I wouldn't say that I'm 100% plastic free. I still, uh, I'm still pushed sometimes at certain days to use plastic, uh, but I'm working on it and I'm accumulating knowledge, I'm sharing knowledge, I'm learning from others. Uh, and this is actually an, uh, a huge adding value to myself uh, when, when I look at personally, any, uh, that I'm working slowly toward more conscious consumption uh, and more awareness. Uh, and even uh, in like du during shopping, uh, it's amazing now when when I when I consciously choose to buy from store because I know the story, I know what am I supporting, and I know the quality of the stuff that I'm buying. So now now when I buy local, 
it's a it's a completely different experience knowing that I'm supporting an economy, I'm supporting people behind the product, and I'm actually not buying polyester or plastic. So it makes a different a difference every day for me. Uh, yes, buying locally, I second this strongly. <laughs> and uh, also uh, promoting for the concept of uh, buying less. Uh, our life now is uh, going in a very fast pace. We have to eat outside. And uh, from a cultural point of view, it doesn't proceed as cool when you go uh, to work with your lunchbox. Uh, sadly, this is like quite uh, trending. And I remember in my university, I was known uh, with a pomegranate uh, girl <laughs> because I used to get fruits and pomegranate and uh, like uh, oranges every day. Yes, it was not perceived as cool, uh, as a cool trend. So yes, we have to promote that no eating healthy, which is which will lead us to a plastic-free food again and getting back again, like as we said, to the uh, old traditions. Uh, it will like decrease our plastic consumption as well. And yes, buying less. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, now we would like to open the discussion to the audience if anyone has a question. Yes, I, uh, I have uh, some uh, points. Uh, number one, I think the responsibility of the Egyptian people is to separate the plastic from the garbage. We put uh, two, two, two places, one for the plastic and one for the other uh, human materials, as in, uh, in Germany they do this. Uh, number two, we have to use these cloth bags you are distributing and how we do this, we encourage the students in the university and in the schools to carry their books in bags, in, uh, in cloth bags. I think here the Egyptians are richer than the German. They don't like to carry their, their books in, uh, in cloth bags. They want to put it in a leather and each person say, ah, my... I have some sonite and I have... Uh, anyhow, uh, number three, we have to encourage the people who return the one kilo of plastic bags or, and give him one pound or something so we can collect all this. And uh, the, the sea is not the place for the... For, uh, to, to, to put the garbage in the sea. I was in Hilton Hotel uh, 10 years ago, and uh, I saw Bill Gates coming to contribute by uh, $1 million, to, and he, he is looking for some, <laughs> someone to give him this check. And it was, uh, there was uh, the, minister, the, uh, the Ministry of uh, of environment was Nadia Makramavid, I think, and another person, his name is Gindi, he is responsible for the Zabalin in El Muatham. And they show us a film about they send uh, people to DDR, the, to the East Germany, <coughs> to take training on how to crack all this garbage and uh, change it to powder. We sell our uh, plastic bottles, I think, uh, uh, 2,000 uh, per ton, and we receive it from China by 10,000. So if we transfer it to uh, small pieces, this will be uh, useful to uh, recycling it again in the uh, industry. So I think these four points, and uh, also, <coughs> don't don't buy the fruits and everything in bags, and I, this was uh, applied in Germany when I was there. Uh, normally we get it free. After a while, when we go to Karlstadt or these uh, uh, places, they say, "Okay, you want a bag? Uh, two, uh, five pfennig. Pfennig is uh, a fraction of a uh, mark." So uh, if, if uh, here 
I, I get the orange in a bag with I pay one, one pound for the bag, I will bring my bag. So this is another way to avoid uh, this huge amount of bags. Uh, this is, this is uh, my idea. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's good to see other generations talking about this also, because here we are young, uh, not saying anything, but there are other generations, and it's so important to see how they're, they're engaged. If I talk to my grandfather, for example, he would never said what you, what you just did. So I'm very glad, very glad to, to hear that. You wanna? Uh, I think you also uh, have raised a very uh, interesting question about uh, how we add value in, uh, on the recycling system because mostly everyone is, is uh, focused in uh, Egypt and even the government with initiatives that's actually currently happening on the collection process. Uh, but maybe if you start thinking more about adding on the collection process, uh, maybe recycling, uh, plastic into pallets, adding this more into the technology, this would save a lot, a lot of carbon emissions of, uh, of plastics that have been transported to China and then back to us again and to products. Uh, so maybe stepping up with the value chain uh, would help reduce the carbon emissions and uh, add a lot of money to the economy. Uh, thank you for sharing this. Anyone has any? Uh, talking about alternatives, I was wondering um, if you encourage people not to use um, plastic bottles, um, given that the tap water is not really that safe to drink, what do you suggest? What, or like, Is it only up to the government or what other solutions are there to maybe support um, better drinking water and on the other hand um, how can you provide more of those um, cotton bags as alternative because I, I mean I have mine but I, do, I wouldn't know where to buy it or where to recommend others where they can get it from. Uh, uh, with water, I would. Uh, yani I use uh, filters. Um, I think it's perfectly yani, uh, same, uh, yani the same thing with uh, with bottled water because it's not also 100% safe, uh, especially with exposure to sunlight uh, and the whole transportation process that we don't know anything about. Uh, so maybe filters would. For me, I would. Uh, it's working. I don't know. It actually depends on the health of the person. I wouldn't recommend something unless they check in with your health and with your, with your doctor. You can actually get to choose whatever water is suitable for you. But for me, it's this is the one thing. Another thing there is a process of reduction. Maybe we can use uh, dispensers, which is a refillable uh, dis uh, dispensers, reusable uh, ones. So it would actually reduce the cost of water that you buy and actually reduce the amount of plastic that we produce. Um, for me, this is, uh, this is my answer to the, the water uh, problem. Okay. Amina? She's still... <coughs> so my problem is, for example, that I'm only here for a semester and I'm staying in the flat where the owner has no interest in investing into water filters. And... Um, yeah, I'm still trying to weigh, okay, is it worth the investment if I'm leaving in a month and yeah I guess it would be a very sustainable investment to leave it for the next person um, but still can is there some channel through which you can reach the government in order to um, promote more water filters or reach out to public places like universities for example to install water filters or Unfortunately, the water quality in Egypt has declined remarkably in the maybe past 10 days, I remember, uh, 10 years, sorry. Uh, I remember when I was young, I used to uh, just use the, the water tap, but now, yes, it is definitely unsafe. So maybe you can just move to the other solution and uh, of uh, buying re refillable water dispensers. And you don't have to buy a dispenser, you can buy uh, a water pump, which is quite cheap. So uh, you can just invent, invest in this 
small amount of money. And uh, also about your second part of the question about w from where you can buy the reusable bags. I think in some chains now uh, you can find a lot of them by the cashier part. Uh, I can rem if I can should say names, uh, Carrefour for example, they have reusable bags. So. Um, I think, yes, they, they are there. I, I, I don't know if, I, if it's only me or not, but uh, I can see them quite spread, not only in supermarkets, but also in other um, back shops. I have also so a DIY about, uh, about how to make a reusable bag from uh, old T-shirts. So maybe it's one thing. And the pumper is from ALF. <laughs> you can get it from ALF. It's very cheap. Yeah. أنا هتكلم عربي. ولا حاجة. آه ماشي. هو السؤال بتاعي أولاً إحنا في المشكلة مش مشكلة البلاستيك بس هو المشكلة اللي عندنا اللي حصلت في مصر إن في الثمانينات كان عندنا أكبر شركة في مصر اسمها شركة راكطة كانت هي اللي بتاخد مخل... اللي تاخد قش الرز أو متبقيات قش الرز وكانت بتنتج لنا منها الورق البراون أو الورق البني اللي إحنا كنا زمان أجدادنا كانوا بيستخدموها في ان هي بيقدروا ياخدوا بيها يلفوا فيها اللحمه تتلف بيها الخضر تبقى عباره في اكياس باجز فكانت في صناعه قائمه. اما حصل ان الشركه دي وقفت وان تمن الورق البراون كنا بنستورده من بره غالي فاصبحت عندنا الاكياس البلاستيك بدات تنزل السوق في الاول كانت ليها ليها سعر عالي بعد كده بقت من بقت اساسي فمن بعد نمو صراع البترول انها انتشرت انتشار النار في الهشيم زي ما بيقولوا. انا عايز ارجع الموضوع ده تاني هو حله حله بسيط جدا ان الحكومه تفرض رسوم على الماده الخام البلاستيك اللي هي مصنعات اكياس البلاستيك انا دلوقتي اروح اشتري الكيس ب 5 جنيه لا انا هجيب الكيس معايا تاني مره ده يعني هو حل حل منطقي يبقى الحكومه كسبت عشان تحافظ على البيئه ضربت على الصوم حجر زي موضوع الكهرباء المصريين ما وفروش وجابوا الليد او لمبات الليد الا لما حصلت كارثه لارتفاع اسعار الكهرباء فالتوجه بقى توجه عام ان انت تشتري اللمبه الموفره على اه سعرها غالي في الاول بس توفير على المدى الطويل شكرا هو انا موافقه جدا شو داير فلاير عربي بقى اوكي <تصفيق> انا موافقه جدا ان البوليسيز او السياسات الحكومه بتحطها هتساعد لكن تاني لو المستهلك مش فاهم هو ليه الحاجات دي بفلوس لو انا ليه كيس البلاستيك ده تمنه خمسه جنيه او حطينا عليه انا موافقه يعني تمام <تصفيق> اكيد تمام تمام بس برضو الشخص مش Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, um, uh, I second you completely. There need to be a gradual intervention with uh, policies and more of understanding and engaging rather than enforcing uh, policies. Uh, but I also completely understand what you are saying and yeah, there need to be charges over, uh, over bags, but maybe with uh, Monor uh, style uh, gradual, uh, more engaging, not enforcing. By love, not force. Any other question? First, thank you for a uh, wonderful documentary film. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I please that you uh, start to make uh, a mobile application and a website for this uh, objective. And I would, would like to ask you to uh, what is the impact at what uh, there is engagement from the society for this uh, application and the website. And I think it takes time, maybe, Many years, 
Okay, where is Eng? Maybe. Uh, is, the, is the integration need uh, need uh, definitely time? Uh, but also it need the gradual adaptation uh, with the language and uh, targeting the, um, the currently existing needs because sometimes we use a language and we feel it's it's bouncing back and uh, maybe now is not the time, maybe the culture is not ready. But the question is that, that we try to ask ourselves, maybe we are asking the question with the wrong wording, maybe we are not engaging the current need of the customer, maybe we are not customer centric or people centric and we are just our objective centric at this point. So uh, we try and we encourage others to think of the existing pain of uh, the citizens, customers and try to engage uh, them with this mentality. Uh, we have time for one more question, so be very wise. I will try to be very wise. Um, I just want to comment actually on your first point. I forgot your name. Manar. You, uh, Manar. 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 Um, okay. Um, you said something that in Germany there was um, banned a lot, like not banned really, but um, from 7 million plastic bags until 2.4 plastic bags, if it's right. Um, and I just want to comment again that this is a very good development, but on the other hand, we can see in Germany that all the, um, the vegetables, the fruits are packed in plastic. So even though we, we don't use that much pl uh, bags for the vegetables, the vegetables themselves are already in plastic bags. And here I see a very, very big, um, uh, yeah, very nice thing in Egypt because we have the souks, the, the regional markets where there isn't that much uh, stuff packed in plastic. So this bad um, development which, which already took place in Germany that everything is in plastic, we really see avocados taken, uh, like being taken apart and you can buy them half and half. Um, so this is something which is really good in, um, in Egypt and where we have a lot of possibilities um, yeah, to, I mean, to ban plastic bags is really cool, but uh, we should also see the possibilities which are here. Exactly. I think it also touches the, the, the point that she was saying, always go local. If you go local, it's, nothing can go wrong. Do you have anything to add? Do you have anything to add? No? You're good? You want to ask? Yeah? I'm sorry, but just the bright side, uh, because uh, this is really important for all of us, and I think thinking green and going green is a responsibility for each and every one uh, that they have to take uh, charges and consider it as its own responsibility and i think that um, i have a very nice uh, thing to share with you today because i always think sometimes or not always but i'm trying to so for example this year uh, we started this year in 2018 and uh, we we had a problem the last year that we were using quite a lot extensive number of bottles water bottles and then we thought like no we're not going to do that this year. So we bought uh, water dispensers and so on. So we reduced almost like 1,000 bottles in one year. So just because sometimes it takes that you have to, you know, sometimes like, no, no, I need to do that. So saying no is very important. Ha, I mean, the concept of no is like, no, I'm not going to do it. Then it's quite a lot. There will be a lot of uh, options. And I think 10 years ago, I would have been dreaming about such a, um, such a discussion when we were here talking about a lot of stuff. So now things is going, it's changing. It's, there is a lot of development. And I think that this field still raw. It needs a lot, a lot of innovation. It needs, it needs a lot, a lot of ideas that come up, uh, alternatives. So that, that's what I love about environment, that it's always challenging us and always keeping us kind of like connected. Those who really, have the heart beating for no, for we want to preserve our planet, it's our right, it's our future. So I think that this is something that um, on the bright side, 
there is a lot of stuff is going on and there is also something that we ourselves are doing as Tahrir Lounge and I would like to invite people who would like to be volunteers next year. We did a curriculum that is, yeah, curriculum for schools and we presented it to the Ministry of Education and it's about uh, environmental protection and awareness. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy and glad to say that. And next year also we're talking to many social clubs that we will go doing campaigns and we, are, we need volunteers to help us in volunteering to go to clubs, talk to young children about what we can do, what, how, how we can be helpful. So I would love to have, uh, to invite more, all of you, to, if you would like to join us, that would be marvelous. So uh, I really thank you very much for this amazing event and very amazing talk and discussions and everybody here in the room and that's it. <laughs> Well, yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Mana, for sharing with us. Uh, thank you, everybody who came. Uh, thank you for Cairo Talks, Cairo, uh, Cairo Climate Talks. Uh, thank you, Mana, for your nice experience, for your kind heart, for your effort and brave braveness, and Shadi also for the kindness and uh, thank you very much for for all the, the effort that you do. Um, thank you, Philip, also for getting us into some details and some information, it's always good. And um, well, now we would uh, proceed to the snacks outside so we can meet and talk and maybe develop more partnerships and think about better solutions. And what, as you said, we share our, our sadness because it's very sad. I got very, I cried even with the movie. But at the end you see, okay, from this dark, you see a light, and that's what she was saying. You want to add something? Yes. Um, if um, you haven't registered your information outside, we would really appreciate it if we have your information because then it helps us um, reaching you again for the next events. And unfortunately, we didn't have the sign-up sheet ready when you guys got here, so we apologize for that. But now, if you can register your information right before you get your snacks, we would really appreciate it. And thank you for coming, and so on. <laughs>